we speak right now is absolutely horrifying. It's unprecedented and it's unparalleled in recent memory. And I keep asking the question, I keep finding myself asking the question, how is this being allowed to continue and how is this being allowed by the international community? And where is the urgency, where is the urgency, the desperation to put a stop to all of this? And, and I find myself also asking the question about why it doesn't rival the disgust at the suffering caused by other atrocities around the world. And as has been already said, you know, sadly we have seen it before. And in 2003, the anti-war movement faced vitriolic opposition and smear campaigns uh, from the political establishment, but also the mainstream media. And I remember at that time I was a teenager, also somebody that uh, you know, participated in a school strike, came out of school in protest, and I, I remember that, and I remember uh, others being part of that, no doubt many of us in this room that were part of that as well. We remember, we remember how we warned at that time that the invasion of Iraq would set off a spiral of conflict that would fuel the conflict and misery of future generations. And again today, the right-wing UK and US foreign policy interests mean that there is barely a pretense, barely a pretense that all lives are of value. And, and for Western powers, for Western powers, it really does seem to be the case, it really does appear to be the case, that there is no limit to how many Gazan children can meet violent ends. Understanding, I think, understanding what is happening through the lens of a critique of Western imperialism and the global balance of power is absolutely key in all of this. And it's crucial, it's absolutely crucial to hold our government to account as to their role. For those of us, for those of us who are Labour Party members, it's also vital to hold our own leadership to account. <laughs> That's why I've been working hard organising in Parliament with the wonderful Zara Sultana and indeed my comrade, my comrade and my good friend Jeremy Corbyn, who is on his way to this venue leading to an unprecedented number of Labour MPs voting for a ceasefire and numerous front bench resignations as well. It's also why we are helping and we are organising protests locally and demonstrations nationally as well. And we must, we must absolutely continue to do that. We must make it clear that history will judge all those who stayed silent all those who looked away, and all those who gave the green light to war crimes. <laughs> now is the time to stand up and be counted, whatever your background, whatever your faith, whatever your political affiliation, and wherever you may be from. And I say that knowing that yes, we are facing increasing censorship. We are being smeared. We are being maligned by those trying to justify what can never ever be justified. And yes, there are those that are also, there are those that are also trying to capitalize on current developments by spreading their hate and division. And I've been a target of that myself. But we must remember that our solidarity must not be defeated. And we know, we know that our struggles here everywhere are connected, it's interconnected. And we know that really well as East Enders, those of us in Tower Hamlets and across East London, where we have had a strong, a long history of standing up against injustice. Whether that was our Jewish community and allies standing up and opposing, the, uh, opposing fascists at the Battle of Cable Street in 1936. <laughs> Bangladeshi communities mobilizing and leading the anti-fascist mobilization in the wake of the murder of al Bali, just down the road from here in 1978. We stand together and we, we come
come together today demanding nothing short of a permanent ceasefire and an end to the siege of Gaza and also an end to the dispossession and ongoing oppression of the Palestinian people. I'll keep raising my voice in Parliament but also in demonstrations as we move forward. I can't stay for the length of the programme today but I do urge all of you to please continue to go on the demonstrations the next national demonstration being next Saturday. Please, please go to them. Please let's keep raising our voices so that our government can continue to hear the strength of our voice. Thank you so much and solidarity. Thank you.